Hello everyone, you're watching the Adas Trading Platform channel. In this video, we'll continue to examine the price development and actions that you can take. We'll also conclude our analysis using two examples from the previous video where we explored market phases using the volume profile. Let's examine how price moves schematically. We'll refer to this as a behavior pattern that includes the majority of price movements. We'll start with a formed flat with volume. While we have a flat, the trading rules involve either rebounding from the boundaries or waiting for a new trend. Sooner or later, the consolidation will be broken. In this example, there is a breakdown at point 1. At this moment, you need to identify the highest volume within the last impulse that triggered the breakdown. It is highlighted by the red rectangle. Until this volume is broken, we won't have signs of a false breakdown, so you can try trading in the direction of the new trend. An alternative scenario involves a volume being broken at point 1, which indicates false signals of the breakdown. After returning to the flat phase, there are two possibilities, either continue trading within the flat or attempt a breakout. In this case, the most reliable option is to look for buying opportunities around point 2. However, if there is no false breakdown, you will witness a rapid development of downward movement, with new volumes forming. During their tests, you can look for new entry points for trend trading. At some point, the downward movement will exhaust itself, and you will see one of the reversal patterns. At this moment, you need to compare the volume of the seller that was present during the consolidation and push the price down with the volume that is attempting to reverse the price upward. If the volume on the right is lower, consider this reversal as a move into a deeper upward correction to test the main volume. However, if the volume on the right is higher than on the left or equal to it, then this setup could indicate a trend reversal, and you may consider new buying entry points, anticipating a new trend. The upward correction may continue until it reaches the core of the seller's position or it can finish earlier. For you, the end of the correction and the resumption of the downtrend will be indicated by a reversal pattern at the end of this correction, as illustrated by the breakdown at point 2. When you have a new impulse and a new low, you need to redraw the volume profile from the beginning of the flat to the current price and check if a new value area has emerged. From my experience, this occurs in about 95% of cases. This area will act as a new resistance level where corrections may occur. Also, you should look for trend following cells starting from this level. Let's go back to the beginning when we moved downwards and encountered a false breakout. A false breakout is a challenging situation to analyze because it opens up a wide range of scenarios. We might remain stuck in this flat for a while or test the main volume of the flat and resume the decline. Eventually, this will lead to a downtrend. Alternatively, we can break out of the flat and start moving along a new trend. If there's a breakout, you should redraw the profile based on the upward impulse that caused the breakout at point 1. Identify where the highest volume during this movement is to locate the strong buyer who pushed the price up. Let's assume the buyer zone is at point 1 or has formed there after the breakout. If the price goes up, then we're lucky and can start trading actively in the direction of the trend. However, if the price goes down and breaks through the buyer, we experience another false breakout. I call it a range expansion. This term is used in market auction theory. The most challenging scenario for trading arises when there are several consecutive range expansions. With each breakout attempt, you'll encounter a false breakout, resulting in a return to the flat. If you notice a consistent widening of the range in various directions, it's best to switch to a higher time frame right away. This suggests that the main activity is likely occurring there, and you are being exploited by others to accumulate their large positions. To sum up, these patterns are quite effective and include various trading scenarios, but not all. The market isn't as predictable as we would like it to be. Therefore, you must differentiate between formations you understand and those you don't. Then, you'll be like a hunter, tracking down the easiest prey for you. If you try to fit every trading situation into a pattern even though there isn't a clear one, the quality of your analysis will decline and the number of unprofitable trades will increase. Learn to wait for your best trading opportunities, as they occur every day. At the end of the video, let's return to the two scenarios we explored in the market phases video. Now, let's talk about how to create a profile and why it should be done exactly this way. In the first example, you see the price growth, but without the profile, the picture is incomplete. However, looking at the price structure, you can intuitively understand where the last relevant price area of the asset could have been. 
When creating a profile, it's crucial to differentiate between flat states and trends, as well as potential buyer and seller positions. To distinguish a flat from a trend, conduct a visual analysis to determine if a flat has formed. If so, you need to identify the trend preceding it and create the profile from the beginning of this trend to its end at the extreme point. Here, you can see that the profile is created from the low to the high. We're filtering out the flat, which is essential to understand where potential buyer positions were. Since this was an uptrend, we can definitively say that buyers profited while sellers lost out. Having created the profile based on spikes, we can see where successful buyers prevailed and what volumes they had. We can identify two significant positions. The upper position wasn't broken down, meaning we didn't have a short reversal setup, and this area served as support for the future developing flat. After that, you can extend the profile to cover the flat and evaluate the volume formed. If the total volume of the upper flat exceeds the last buyer's volume, then the new volume can be considered as a new position. It may either continue the previous trend or reverse it downward. Therefore, it's crucial to wait for signs of winners, such as the price going above or below the value area. In the next example, we observe an ongoing uptrend. Therefore, it's essential to create the profile from point 0.2 to point 0.3, representing the extremum. To illustrate, I've created the profile for the downtrend and the current uptrend. You can track the development of the downtrend using the red volumes. At the bottom point, volume formed, and the price reversed upward. Next, we see new green volumes from buyers. It's crucial not to mix them with the red volumes. If we built one profile for the entire range, we would get a more unstable profile and worst of all, we would dilute areas of potential buyer interest with empty volumes from sellers, which no longer provide any useful insights for analysis apart from serving as technical levels where the price may slow down. The largest green volume at the top stands out among the rest, making it the most crucial. A breakdown of this volume would signal a trend reversal, while its test would present the best buying opportunities with minimal risk and maximum potential for movement. Since the largest volume formed within the range, we can examine it separately from the overall upward movement to identify intermediate zones that will either support the trend or result in more prolonged corrections if they get broken. Let's create the first profile for the whole flat and the moment of the impulsive breakout from it. The second profile will be for the entire upward wave that led to the breakout. Now we see a blue upper zone with volume. The breakdown of this zone will signal a reversal for us. However, keep in mind that it'll happen amid the strong uptrend and this reversal will be just a correction, as there is a strong buyer position presumed to exist below us in the flat. Alternatively, such a reversal can be false, and the price might immediately resume its upward movement. So, we've discussed the current situation in more detail and identified the zone that presents a good buying opportunity when it's being tested. We've also found where a probable transition to a correction might occur, and to which zone this downward correction might continue. Hit the like button, subscribe, and download the platform for free. See you in the next video.